Today we continue to work on wiring on Michael's Mark III. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to continue working on wiring on Michael's Mark III. The wiring intimidates a lot of people and I can't say I blame them. If you've never wired or anything and, or if you've had a bad experience wiring something in the past, uh, that will tend to lead to your anxiety. Um, the Ron Francis harness that comes with uh, the Factory 5 Complete Kit is actually not bad. There are some pitfalls um, with it. I've always had at least one issue with each harness that we've gotten, but they're minor. And so if you can identify those and work around them, they work great. What we're going to do today is uh, we're going to wire in the amplifier in the back for the sound system that uh, Michael's decided to add to the car and we're going to continue on some of the work behind the dash since the motor's still out of the car we're not going to be able to wire any of that stuff yet most of the Holly stuff is going to be plug and play for the most part so um, we'll get into that when we drop the engine back in the car but for today we're just going to work on the chassis harness alright today we're actually going to start in the middle of the car because we had to work backwards a little bit. Um, so when someone asks you how much it's, uh, how much it's gonna cost, um, and you've already done a lot of the work, the answer is usually more. Um, we already had the rear harness run to the back of the car. And so in order to get the number 10 supply wire required for the amplifier that we're gonna be using, the rear harness of the Ron Francis chassis harness uh, had to have a number 10 wire run from the front of the car to the back of the car. Now understand the battery is in the back of the car but with the Holly system being run directly to the battery we're going to quickly run out of space on the eyelets of the battery cables um, Meaning we're gonna we're gonna put eyelets on the negative side, and we're gonna put two eyelets for the Holly system on the positive side because we've got the Holly main, the Holly ground, and then we have the Holly fuel pump and fuel injector power right here. And so, even if we combine these into one eyelet. We've still, we're still we're still using up the bolt on there, and I would like to get um, a charging, like a like a charging pigtail for a um, battery tender or one of the other manufacturers, so that Michael can keep the battery charged if the car is uh, stored in the garage for any length of time. So, with that, what we're going to end up doing, and I may have discussed this in an earlier video, we're actually going to put a main power stud on the firewall right here. So what I've done is I've run the number 10 wire for the amplifier through the, the, the rear harness and I've got it just hanging out of the rear harness right here. What we'll do is we'll make a transition there with some smaller split loom and it will come behind, come behind these wires here and over and on to our main power stud. The trigger wire to turn the amplifier on and off is going to be a green wire that we are not using to the vehicle speed sensor. I'm going to see if I can find that over here because I know I, I left it hanging out. I just need to find exactly where it is. I think it's right here. So this right here 
is the vehicle speed sensor wire that goes down into the tunnel and would go to the side of the transmission. Since we are running a GPS speedometer, we're not going to be, be using that. So what I've done is on the other side of it where it terminated in the tunnel, I've extended it back and it goes into the rear speaker box. The main power ground for the amplifier is behind here, um, landed on the stud that our main battery cable is landed on. And if I said this in a previous video, we also have a secondary ground going to the fuel pump that I have landed on that stud in the back of the car too. So with all that, I have run power to the amplifier. I've got it coming up through the grommet right here. I've got it coming to a fuse holder. I've got a 30 amp fuse installed in here, which is the maximum fuse size for the amplifier that the blah punk instructions say to use. And then I have the wires terminated on the side, main power in, trigger power in, and then ground. So that part of the wiring is complete. I still have to um, pick up some speaker wire. I may have some at my construction office. Um, when we do home theaters, we use oxygen-free speaker wire, which is uh, plenum rated, and that doesn't really matter here. But what it, what, what it boils down to is it has an outer jacket on it that can be run in um, return air type uh ceilings above t-bar and so it's got a nice heavy jacket on the outside it's actually got two jackets the wire uh, the wire has a jacket and then there's a secondary covering over the outside so without getting too far into the weeds which i've probably already done i'll see if i have some scraps of that wire and i can use that to wire the speakers i will leave those connected to the amplifier and probably just laying inside the box for the time being and then once the upholstery is all done and the speakers go in then we'll terminate the wires time to the speakers and then we'll be set to go um, still need to put the antenna for the bluetooth onto the amplifier it's still in the box with the instructions so i probably won't do that until we get closer to putting power to all this stuff but um, other things that we're going to be working on is the dash wiring which will be the gauges and as you can see with the holly system as close as it is to the dash we're going to be putting that um, dash panel in here uh, momentarily seeing where our gauges can lay out without interfering with the holly system and all the other wiring that's already in there and then i'll bring you guys back and we'll take a look at that Okay, everybody, still plugging along on the electrical on Michael's Mark III. We are in into the stage where we are starting to terminate a lot of the wires. And some of those, funny as that sounds, have to do with the Terminator X system. So we worked on getting the seat heater harnesses in. So if we look right here, you can see that we've got the two plugs for the seat heaters on each side of the vehicle so here are the set for the passenger side right here and then what we did is on the driver's side we've got the relay mounted right here this is actually in front of where the tail shaft of the transmission and the drive shaft are so we're a little protected should catastrophic drive shaft failure happen but i've also tucked these up as high as we could on the frame since these particular relay sets are not the the uh, weatherproof type and then we've routed the wires up to the front for the two switches these are the switches right here so it is a high and low heat switch and we're going to end up mounting these right in the front of the transmission tunnel in a finished piece that will have the companion vinyl or leather material on the top of the tunnel 
So we'll have one of those on each side, one for the drivers, one for the passengers. And then we routed the wires up through the front of the car and it goes through the firewall through an existing grommet that we have in here for the rear harness and the Holley Terminator. And it comes out into the vehicle behind the dash and it's these red wires here. Now what we tied those to is we tied those to a 20 amp circuit that is designated in the Ron Francis harness as heater. We are going to use a different supply for the actual heater blower motor. Since we're not running an air conditioning system in this, we are not going to have to worry about turning a compressor for the air conditioning on and off. And so we should be able to get by with a 15 amp circuit. I don't remember which one we have as a spare, but we're going to use that for the heater and the seat heater since we needed 10 amps for each side ended up going to the seat heaters. We also terminated the wire going to the back of the car for the amplifier. We terminated that to the switched radio feed in the Ron Francis harness. So that is terminated as well. And we worked on, oh, we worked on terminating the battery lead. So we have the main battery lead here. We have this, this is the power that goes to the back of the car for the audio amplifier. Then we have power for the Ron Francis harness. We have power for our high amp fan cooling fan and we have power for our ignition switch and that power goes through the ignition switch and will power all of our switch and in ignition related circuits these two stray wires here one is for the battery sorry the starter trigger wire so this blue wire is going to go down to the starter and that's what's going to tell the starter to engage the solenoid to start the car and the brown wire here is going to go to our Ford 5G alternator. So I'm still investigating this particular one. I think we still need a 510 ohm resistor in this, but I haven't confirmed that. So before I cut the wire or put the resistor in line, I want to find something definitive because since the computer isn't controlling this, Normally on the Ford alternators, if they're direct wired to the ignition, they have an issue seeing a full 12 volts. So the 510 ohm resistor basically tricks the alternator in thinking that there is a trouble light in, in line. And so we're going we're gonna to double check on that before we terminate this onto the alternator, but I think we're going to end up adding that resistor to it. We also worked on some of the wiring in the foot box and we are still working on getting stuff like the fuse for the cooling fan hooked to the battery which is going to be these two wires here and then we're going to feed from the other side of that fuse up to our relay and then out of the relay go out to the fan. I think we've covered that before, but I now have the feed wire into the foot box and that's ready to go. We also have routed the green wire for the fuel pump for the Holly system over to the fuse box. That will tie into the tan wire right here for the fuel pump and that Holly terminator is going to tell the Ron Francis harness to turn the fuel pump on. All right guys, we are closing out on wiring for Michael's car. Um, all of the chassis harness and Holly is pretty much done now. We have just the dash left and the weather pack connectors for 
the chassis. So we need weather pack connectors for the front left of the car for the headlight marker light. We need to put on weather pack connector for the um, cooling fan, which we have. I ordered it with the fan when we got when we ordered the fan. We have the weather pack connectors for the right side headlight and marker light in the front. We have the weather packs for the rear left. Now keep in mind, we're eliminating one of these wires. We're not going to have a brake light circuit back here because we're sharing a brake light circuit with the turn signal for this car because it's getting single lights in the back. So on the left side of the car, we still got to do a weather pack and then we have to do a weather pack for the right rear of the car. I did bring home some CL2 or CL3 rated, plenum rated wire. We're going to use that for the speakers and still going to have to put some eyelets on the Holly power cables that are going to attach to the battery. But other than that, the wiring is done. We, um, we got all of the wiring between the Holly and the chassis harness finished up. Um, I'll show you this before I pull this vice grip off. And then I did a quick layout of the dash. So I have uh, the template laid out for the glove box that we have. I think Michael got the glove box from finish line. I'm not sure. I, th I think it's from them. Um, and then we used this layout to lay out all of the different gauges on the dash. So I haven't drilled any of these holes or hole sawed out for the big ones because Michael wants to double check. This is where he wants everything. I have a competition dash. Actually, I have it. It's over there by the window. Um, I have a competition dash that I keep here in the shop and I use it as a template when I make new dashes. Um, I don't know that I'll ever use that one I have simply because since it's already a competition dash, it has all of the locations for all of the gauges and I don't want to lose that and have to measure one out from scratch so I just use that as a template so basically I just laid that one over this blank dash that Michael got from factory 5 and we made all the holes so we're gonna go oil temperature here water temperature there speedo and tack we've reversed on the actual 427 SE layout these should be tack should be here speedo should be here Michael wants the speedo closer to the, the steering wheel, so we swap those. And then they show an amp meter here. We have a volt gauge instead, fuel level sensor there, or level gauge there, and then oil pressure at the far end. This is not the way I would lay out the, the, uh, the gauges. Um, in my own car, I have water temperature and oil pressure here. I don't, they're, they're, they're both right here. I just don't remember. I'm not looking at it right now. I think I may have put oil pressure to the left because to me, that's the most critical gauge and next comes temperature. So I wanted to have those in sight and my tack, I think my tack is here where the competition dash layout shows it because I want my eyes on the tack all the time. The speed is less important. The only other things that we changed on here is on the SC layout, we would have a high beam indicator here and we would share one indicator light for both left and right turn signal. We changed that so that their left turn signal will be here, right will be here, and we're gonna add the high beam next to the speedo gauge right here. So let me pull that out of the way and we'll take a look at all of the connections for the holly system and everything that is behind the dash Ugh. don't use vice grips don't don't use vice grips when you're holding your padded factory 5 dash the new dash that they have the plastic one you'll destroy it um i only used them there because there's no padding on there right now um, so here you can see we got the plenum or the box for the heater core all in place. We've attached it with two little clips, one here on the right, 
one here on the left. We use some, some thin foam, self-adhesive foam, uh, to seal off the box the best we could. So that's all mounted now. I went ahead and I ran the, all of the power wires for the blower motor through the side of the box that we made and then through the firewall. Those come into the cockpit here. I did have to extend those, so those all have uh, uh, solder joints here with some heat shrink on there. And then I've got them over here. We haven't decided on where the heater controls are going to go yet in the dash. So as soon as we narrow that down, I'll know where to cut those and then they can be terminated on the switch. So the Holly system is all in and wired. The main connectors are in, the relays are uh, mounted for the fuel pump, the main power connector is in, and then of course we've got fuses for the fuel pump and fuel injectors here, and we've got the main power fuse, which I think is a 30 amp for the Holly, right here. And then next to that, I think we've shown you before, the, um, the relays for the turn signals. That's what's going to allow us to use the, um, the single lights on each side in the back rather than twins one for brake and one for turn signals so the holly system right here we've got a green wire that is for the fuel pump we've got this red with a white stripe that is its switched power and we have the blue wire which is a tack output i think yeah it's a tack output from the holly so that's going to send a signal to our tachometer on the dash. So the way I tied those in, the green comes all the way over here. It comes into the fuse panel here, and then this green wire here terminates into the fuel pump relay for the Ron Francis. The blue wire, which we were just talking about, the tack, gets tied into the purple tack wire in the Ron Francis harness. And then that comes back over to one of these connectors that go to the dash. It's probably this purple right here. So that's going to give our tack signal to the gauge. And we're going to be good to go on that. The red wire, which is the switched power that turns the holly basically on and off with the ignition switch is tying into the orange wire which the Ron Francis lists as the coil or EFI so it's got two different designations that are you can use it for either and same thing there it goes into the loom here and then it actually goes into the fuse box and I don't think I can show you because it's kind of crowded in there. I think it's one of these wires back here. So I think it's this, this orange wire right here that I've got my finger on. So all of that stuff is in and done. We've got the Ron Francis stuff here waiting. So these wires here are going to tie into the Ron Francis turn signal. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put some type of quick connectors on here. I may put weather packs on these. The problem with the weather packs is that they will not fit through, uh, some of them won't fit through the hole, but I did have to bore a pretty big hole in the dash for the Ron Francis steering shaft tube. So the, the only the downside of that is you'll have to pull the Ron Fran, uh, the, uh, uh, the Russ Thompson turn signal switch out and kind of leave it hanging while you pull the dash off but it's you know it's better than pulling the body off to pull the dash off one thing that we are going to do since i'm right here we're going to add some aluminum l metal right here on the corner in the center and on the other side of the dash hoop to lower the mounting screws down that the dash attaches with so that those screws don't end up behind the body because the body actually lips over the front of the dash and so if you put the screws up here they're going to be covered so a little tip for you guys take a piece of three quarter by three quarter inch l uh, aluminum l cut it into maybe a two inch piece um adhesive and pop rivet to the bottom here and then you just put your screws your tr your black trim screws that factory five gives you right through the face 
uh, of course you've got to drill a pilot hole first, right through the face of the dash, and they'll be low enough so that when the body comes and sits over, you are not covering up those screws and you'll be able to get the dash off. It won't be easy, because it's still wedged up behind the body, but you can pull, pull it out far enough to, to kind of wiggle and maneuver the dash out. And uh, since Factory 5 gives you these nice connectors to disconnect everything, provided you don't add anything else, you can disconnect these and the, the dash pretty much comes out. All right, everybody, I think that is all we have for you today. The wiring on this is 80%. Like I said, um, we're, we've still got all the weather pack connectors, you know, and all the final connections to make. And I may, I may bring you back for that as we start to install, you know, the weather pack connectors on the four corners of the car and for the fan and the stuff like that. But the wiring for the most part is done. We still have to put the engine back in because as you can see the engine is not in there the engine's still sitting over there on the stand but I'm waiting on some stuff I'm waiting on the headers um, and I'm waiting for motor mounts a new transmission mount and uh, a couple of other things I can't remember what they were but um, since we had the motor out we we just figured we might as well go ahead and get some new engine mounts and a new transmission mount again for the new transmission and uh, so I think those were just ordered this past week. So hopefully I'll have them this week. And uh, then once the engine's in, then we can start plugging everything in from the Holly system into the engine or onto the engine. And uh, then we should be ready to fire it. Hopefully we'll get the headers here in the next couple of weeks because, boy, they've, they've, been, uh, they've been working on those for a while. But we did get a call from the header company saying that uh, they had started work on them. And I would expect that, uh, you know, it shouldn't take them more than two weeks to uh, custom make a set of headers. I don't know. I've never made headers before. So, hoping to have those back here quick. And uh, then, uh, hopefully, we can do a fire up of the engine. And uh, that ought to be fun. As always, thanks for watching. Um, if you'd like, since we're starting to get more subscribers, go ahead and click the subscribe and notification you know all that stuff and uh, the next time one of the videos come out then we can uh, make sure you get notified on that stuff thanks for watching guys have a great day